Hey guys, what's up? I'm Justin. I'm here with Richard. And guys, the MLB draft is about two months away. And we're going to give you the complete first round picks on our basis. Um, before we get to the picks, uh, Richard, what's going on, man? Not too much. Time to talk about the draft. Yeah, so let's talk about this draft. A lot of nice name prospects. I heard a lot of them. But sadly, being an Arizona State baseball fan, I don't see any of the uh, any Arizona State players being drafted in the first round. So, Richard, let's start this off with the first round, first pick of the draft. We'll go to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Richard, who do you have going first? Uh, I'm not just like Garrett Cole. It's all about the draft sick, and you went in. But I don't think that'd be pretty uh, smart at all, considering that they have Pedro Alvarez. Even though Anthony Wendon is probably the greatest talent in the draft, I think that Garrett Cole, once he develops... Uh, the right hand at UCLA, once he develops, uh, can be a potential two or three guy, maybe even an ace. Uh, he's six foot, 220 pounds, so uh, he's got the frame, and I think that he'd be the best possible pick for the Pirates. Yeah, the Pirates, uh, I think Eric Cole's going to go the first uh, first pick in the draft. Um, I really like how what he can throw. This guy is a beast at what he does. Um, Pittsburgh somewhat need help in their pitching. I mean, Ross Olendorf, James McDonald, my favorite is James McDonald out of the whole pitching rotation. Paul Mahalam, yeah, that's somewhat of a, that's a terrible pitching rotation. Well, not that terrible, but it needs work. So they got to get a pitcher in this, this draft. So I have to say Garrett Cole. Um, next, we have the Seattle Mariners. Richard, who do you have being drafted by the Mariners? Oh, this is going to definitely be Anthony Rendon. Uh, they don't really have anything. Third baseman over there in uh, Seattle. Uh, I know they, they juggle with Sean Figgins over there at third. Uh, like I said, Anthony Rendon is the greatest talent available, and I think that uh, once he develops, he's compared mostly to David Wright, which I can see. Once he develops, uh, this guy's going to be a force in the league, I believe. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I have to like, completely get off the infielder. I'm going to another pitcher. Um, one of the guys who I, I have never seen in this pick, or not in the first round, um, I'm going to have to go with Matthew Perk of the uh, Texas, Christ, uh, Texas Christian University, TCU. This guy is a beast. TCU is going to go, is going to be in a different way because Matt Perk has just been a dominating pitcher. And so I have to say that Matt Perk is going to go to the Seattle Mariners. Um, going down to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, they had the third pick in the draft, but I think this is going. I'm going to start off with my pick, Richard. So if you don't mind, um, I'm going to have to give this to Anthony Rendon. Um, he's being compared to David Wright. I really think that he's going to fit well in the Diamondbacks organization. Um, I hope I get to see him. If he gets drafted by the Arizona Diamondbacks, uh, I'll be really surprised. So he'll be he fit well in the desert in Arizona. So Richard, who do you have going third pick? Uh, I have Matthew Perk. I don't think Anthony Rendon's going to slip past Seattle. But I have Matt Perk, uh, like you said, from TCU. The guy is just a beast. Um, he's compared to uh, David Price. Uh, I just think that he's another potential solid ace for a Diamondbacks. That's pretty average with Ian Kennedy and Daniel Hudson. Uh, I think that with him, uh, Daniel Hudson and Ian Kennedy... Once he gets up there, that'll be a pretty dominant one, two, three rotation in the future. Yeah, um, I really like Matthew. Per I'm, I'm just really, 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 really happy just to see this guy come out. So I hope Matthew Perk will either get drafted second pick or third pick. Uh, but I really hope that he's going to get picked uh, second overall. Next, we have the Baltimore Orioles coming in fourth in the draft. Um, not very concerned about the Orioles. So, Richard, who do you have going in the fourth pick for the Di or for the Orioles? Uh, I'm going to have to go with the Vanderbilt right-handed pitcher, Sonny Gray. Um, he's 5'11", 195 pounds. He's just another really dominant guy he's compared to Roy Oswald. So, that's a pretty good comparison uh, considering uh, it's Roy Oswald. So, I have him going to the Orioles. Yeah, I have Bubba Starling out of Gardner on Edgerton. I guess that's like a high school. I don't know for sure. Um, plays outfield. He's 6'5", 200 pounds. I heard this guy is just a complete beast. 
at in the outfield. He can make great plays. Um, he's projected to be either in the top five or maybe he's gonna. He's no. He's not gonna go underneath the top seven pick. So I think that he's gonna go to the oh, Baltimore Orioles. Um, going to the Kansas City Royals coming up next. They're gonna have the fifth pick in this draft. I have a big question on the Royals. This team has the number one of. Uh, my farm system in this league I really have to say that uh, they're going to get um, uh, Sonny Gray out of Vanderbilt this this they're just going to improve in their minor league system I mean this team their minor league system terrific I think it's going to be a beast but adding Sonny Gray this guy can pitch sometimes in the triples he has a high fastball that can reach 90 maybe 95 that's the last time I saw this guy is just a complete monster uh, uh, Richard, who do you have getting picked by the Royals? I uh, was stalling. Uh, the Kansas City Royals looking at their outfield right now it isn't exactly the greatest outfield. Like you said, they have a great farm system. Uh, I could even see maybe even George Springer, but I'll go with uh, I'll go with um, Bubba Starling for now. So you're gonna go with Bubba Starling? Um, yep. Next, we have the Washington Nationals. Um, I cannot really predict on how will what who will the Nationals go after, but if I was the Nationals, I'll go after a pitcher and Danny Holson, um, out of Virginia. I don't know much about him, but I've been reading on a lot of scouting reports. This guy's getting um, compared to Mark Pryor of the uh, New York Yankees, so I guess that's the best bet for the Nationals at this point. Richard, who do you have? Uh, I'm gonna go with George Springer. Um... Like I said, he could go to the Royals, or the, I think probably the Nationals, too. Uh, if they draft him, there could be a potential Bryce Harper and uh, George Springer in the field, which would be pretty scary. George Springer's come, uh, compared to Alex Rios. Uh, he uh, dominated the Big East last season, uh, where he hit uh, for a 337 average of 60. Doubles, four triples, 18 homers, 62 RBIs, and 33 stolen bases. Looking at those stats alone, he's a five-tool player. I think he's gonna end up going to the Washington Nationals at the number six pick. Yeah. Um, next, we have the Arizona Diamondbacks. Three picks after picking their player, they get another pick in the draft. So I've got a lot of questions on the Diamondbacks being here from Arizona. Um, I'm gonna have to say the next pick in the draft for the Diamondbacks is going to be Jed Bradley, uh, left-handed pitcher out of Georgia Tech. This guy has nice abilities. Um, his fastball can reach 90 to 93. His changer um, can reach 79 to 82. His slider can reach 83 to 87. I mean, this guy is just a beast. So um, I see him fitting well with this Diamondbacks organization. Richard, who do you have going for the for the next pick for the Diamondbacks? Uh, I'm going to go with Tyler B. He's a right-handed pitcher out of Lawrence Academy, which is a high school. He's 6'4", 200 pounds. He's compared to A.J. Burnett, which is kind of a scary comparison. But uh, he can pitch in the mid-90s. Um, says here on the scout report, he has an above-average changeup with an excellent with excellent sink. Uh, he also features a tight curveball that he is still developing. Uh, I think that uh, I think that he would be a great fit in Arizona. Uh, again, another guy who can eventually make it through the ranks. Uh, Kennedy and Daniel Hudson in the majors. Yeah. Um, next in the countdown, we have the I think it's uh, the Cleveland Indians. Richard, who do you have going for the Cleveland Indians? I don't. As of right now, I'm still um, having iffies on this one. Richard, who do you have going for the Indians? Um. I'll go with Danny Holson, uh, the left-handed pitcher out of Virginia. Uh, you explained him earlier, so I don't have any need to explain him. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to go with, uh, I think, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, his name's Francisco Lindor. Um, he's um, a, a shortstop out of Florida, uh, Monteverde Academy. That sounds like a high school. Um, his scouting report seems pretty good. Um, he has a weakness to pull off balls and gear pull rather than go straight away. So he's not he's gonna not gonna pull it straight away. Um, but he has nice strengths. He has average hands, footwork, and range. He's an average runner. Um, saw some raw batting power. I mean, this guy is just 
he's somewhat of a power hitter playing a, sh a shortstop position is what I've been hearing. Um, this guy's been compared to guys like Starlin Castro and Jose Reyes. Um, I don't know if I want to go that big, but it could be considered. Um, but I'm going to have to go with Francisco Lindor getting picked up by the Cleveland Indians. Next, we have the Chicago Cubs on our list. Richard, who are you going with? Um, the Chicago Cubs, I'll go with Daniel Norris. He's uh, out of Science Hill High School. I'm not quite sure on the location. Um, he's compared to David Price. Uh, according to the scouting report, uh, he possesses a mid-90s fastball with a very easy arm action. He struggles a bit with his control. However, he struck out 140 batters and 64.1 innings to boast uh, and, uh, and boast a 25-1 high school record going into his senior year. That's pretty nuts. 25-1 I mean, is high school, but nonetheless, uh, and 140 Ks and 64 and a third. That's incredible to say the least. Uh, I think that he's. I don't think he'll make the majors for a couple of years, just because in high school. I can see him making it there in the early in his early twenties, but I like Daniel Norris a lot. Yeah, um, I have right-handed pitcher Tech out of Texas, Taylor Jungman, if I pronounce it right. This guy uh, I've heard is a really nice pick for this team. I think the Chicago Cubs having a pretty decent pitching rotation. Um, I think adding Jungman, a guy coming out of Texas, this guy can reach. 90 to 95 mile an hour fastball. Um, his main pitch right now is his fastball, actually. Um, his curveball can reach about 83 to 84. I mean, it's just a one point off, but that's how far that he clocked it at um, during the uh, prospect uh, workouts. So I really think that there, this is going to be the best team for uh, Tyler going into this uh, Taylor going into this draft. Next, we have the San Diego Padres. Uh, my dad's favorite team, but even though he worked cooks for like all these different players or teams. Uh, Richard, who do you have going for this team? Uh, I'm going to go with Dylan Bundy. He's a right-handed pitcher out of Wausau High School. Um, I don't have a scouting report. Well, Richard just uh, skipped out there a little bit. Um, Richard... Uh, you skipped out a little bit. Are you there, bro? Um, I apologize, guys, for this. Uh, Richard is actually cutting out, having technical difficulties, and we're actually getting our videos from Skype. So we're going to cut this video short so when Richard comes back onto the video, we will get back to you guys on the San Diego Padres. We'll leave off with the Padres. We'll talk to you guys soon. Enjoy part two. Uh, we'll pick up with the Padres. Talk to you guys later.